Hello everybody. How are you doing? Hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are. Ah, I'm excited to be here for this one today. Loved painting this one. All right. Hello everybody. Let me check my Facebook feed because I'm going live in both places. I want to make sure everything's working. We are having a fairly nice day here in Missouri. It's a little cloudy, a little cooler than yesterday. Yesterday was a gorgeous day. Um, rain tonight, tomorrow, cooler temperatures, Friday and Saturday, but back warm on the weekend. So I won't complain about that. Won't complain about that. So, are you all hearing me okay? I want to make sure my sound's working. I did test it this morning. Everything seemed to be okay. Hi, Don. How are you? I just want to make sure you all are getting my sound before I switch my camera over. So, can you hear me okay, Don? Anyone? 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 Okay, all right, thank you, Letitia. I appreciate that. My sound is good, so we are going to make me little in the corner. Put me up here. All right, so you guys know this is what we're painting today. Now, this is a full packet on my website, lanalam.com. You can go over there and check that out. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Paula. I appreciate that. Um, so this one that I'm working on today that I'm going to be showing you how to paint today is got two stencils that I'm going to be using in it. Um, I also have this B line drawing on my website, but it's this big. <laughs> You'd have to reduce it because um, that's what I did. This is uh, one of my pillow covers. Um, so I did reduce it to fit on here. You can use that B line drawing. Um, there was a B line drawing in the packet. But it's different than this one, and it's different than this one. Any beeline drawing will do. will work just fine. And this wood grain is a little bit different. Uh, I've done some other designs where I've done this type of wood grain in the background. So uh, it's very, very easy wood grain. Today we're going to do this, and I'm going to do it a little bit different way. This is the packet, so you can grab that on my website. I'm going to be using two stencils today. Uh, I'm going to be using my Let It Be stencil. I'm going to be using B and Happy. And on this one here, I'm going to be using the negative part of the B as well as the B stencil part. Okay. Um, actually, I may just only use this particular part of it. Uh, well, I might pull the stencil out and show you how to use it because um, I didn't want to have to use a stencil. I could not find my stencil that I had out the other day. I have hunted my whole studio for it. Um, it this one is a little bit different. I'm get it out of the package. Um, well, I seriously cannot get this out of the package. <laughs> I need to pull that other one out. But you don't have to have this particular stencil if you don't want to. There we go. Stuck in the corner. I'm not really sure how that happened. But um, I did not use the stencil when I painted this originally. I, I used the negative part to get where my B went. And I'll show you how I did that in a little bit. But uh, using the stencil part will definitely make it a little bit easier and quicker for painting in the body. So I'll show you how to do that, but I may just um, paint it by hand without using the stencil. Okay. Okay, so. Otherwise, if you're using the B, B line drawing that is provided in the packet, uh, when we get uh, done with our background, you can just transfer it on with some gray transfer paper. So, 
Hello, happy to be here. Very, very cute, Jan. Very, very cute. So this one that I painted here is on an 8x8 uh, canvas panel. Uh, just one that I bought at uh, Hobby Lobby. Um, I love painting on these canvas panels, mostly because I store most of my stuff. If it's something I think I want, want to paint, hang on the wall, like uh, the other B that I, uh, one that I showed you, it's on a gallery wrapped canvas uh, on a thick, thick canvas. I don't have to have any frames for that type of canvas. Uh, even the regular ones I don't have to have a frame for. So um, I do like to paint on canvases and canvas panels a lot. But today I'm going to be painting on wood. Um, if you're painting on a canvas, it's excellent for this background technique because we're going to be using a palette knife and it's going to grab the paint and leave paint behind. I don't know how well it's going to do on the wood surface, but I'm definitely going to give, be giving it a shot. So, all right, let's make sure we've got everybody. Hello, Verdi. Hello, Debbie. Good morning. It's morning in Oregon. It's it's afternoon here in Missouri. So, okay. All right. So, um, some of the things that you're going to need, uh, just your, your brushes, they're all listed in there. You are going to need a palette knife. Um, you're going to have some kind of pencil tool thing. And then um, when I did the wings, I used a marker. Um, I do sell all three of these pens on my website, and they're all different size for the smaller uh, nib on here. This one is 0.4 mm. That's the Identa pen. The Delimate is 0.5, and the Micron pen is 0.05. It's very fine. Um, but the, all three of these are available on my website. I think on this one, uh, I think I used the Deli Mate pen. Not 100% sure on that, but um, I'll show you before I draw on there. I'll draw on some paper and show you the differences between uh, those pens, and you can make a judgment call on what you want to do. Um, all right, Is everybody ready? All right, so I've got my uh, ruler here and my pencil, and. I'm just going to make some varying size lines on here. Uh, whatever size you want them to be. Oh, and by the way, if you did purchase the packet online, there is a paint listed in the list of paints that I did not use. I'm not sure how that got on there, except that I, I uh, reuse my um, main page of uh, the supply page, and then I change out for what I'm doing for each packet. Um, I must have left it on there from another uh, packet that I did. <laughs> it's margarita. We are not using margarita anywhere in this design. <laughs> There's, what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six colors. And this, you know, the sixth one, which is the gray, you don't even really need it, gray sky. Uh, you can just mix black and white to get a light gray. So you don't necessarily need that one. If you don't have it, mix your black and white. So I'm going to make some varying size lines on here, and uh, some wide ones, some narrow ones, whatever you want them to be. I'm sure these will not be exactly like my one over there, because I'm not, I'm not looking at it to see what, what lines I made on it. I'm just going down this board and creating some lines. And I think I'll do one more down here. So you can have as few or as many lines as you want. So I made them all a different size. I think that makes it more interesting. So uh, don't feel like you have to make them all the exact same size. All right, I'm gonna grab my easel. Put it up here, makes it a little easier for you, a little easier for me. I'm excited to show you guys at the end of today what we're doing next week. It's going to be so fun. All right, I'm going to be using a palette knife. 
Um, I did base coat my wood surface with a coat of multi-purpose sealer and then uh, a coat of uh, or two of gray sky depending on what color your surface is when you're starting with. I'm normally starting with a dark brown surface so I will put at least two coats on it. Um, I think this actually had a coat of white on it so I just put one coat of gray on it. I use my two inch foam roller, my damp roller, to get that on there. And uh, now we're ready to start working on the background. Hi Charlene, Veronica, I like this background. I like this background too. It was so fun, so fun to create. So we're gonna need our blue, and then our black and our white. Those are the only colors I used in this background. more white out because I'm going to need to mix a little bit to make a dark gray. Okay, so I started out, I think, uh, mixing a little bit of gray on mine. So I'm going to take my white and some black and I want to make sure it's a darker value than what my uh, um, current background is. So just make a nice gray color and I've got the back of my palette knife with some paint. Now I'm just going to skim this across, tilt it maybe a little bit this way, not where it's flat flat, it's going to be tilted up like this. I will eventually tilt it flat when I start running out of paint on my palette knife, but I'm going to start just slightly angled and let it just skim across here. Now again, if you're working on a canvas, this is going to do so so beautiful on a canvas. So um, on a wood surface, it's not going to do uh, the same. And I'm just going to put this here and there. I'm not, I'm not worrying about where it's going. I'm really not going to try and make it like my other one. There's just, oh, there's just no way. So if you do that, don't stress out. <laughs> It's going to do that a little bit like that on a wood surface, so I had way too much paint and I pushed too hard on it, went too flat. So that is not an issue, it's fixable. I'll take more white and make that light gray, or I could just grab my light gray. Um, that I painted my background with, and I'll just start breaking that up. Okay, just break it up. Just throw some in there. I mean, this is all background stuff. By the time we're done, it's all gonna just blend in there and you're not gonna see a lot of it. Okay, so I wiped my uh, palette knife off. I'm gonna get some white paint now and start placing some of this on here randomly. Just wherever, wherever. Don't overdo it, just kind of put some on there and let it be. Okay, I want some of this blue on here. So I'm gonna put some blue on here. Uh, I think I also put some black on there, it looks like I did. So blue can be wherever you want it to be. And it's a little bit starker color, so maybe a little bit less on your palette knife. Just let it go where it wants to go. Picking up small amounts of paint on my palette knife. A little bit more blue. Kind of working it onto the palette knife. I've got a little bit more on my palette knife this time, so I'm going to very lightly come in here with it, and then I can start giving more pressure on the palette knife, and there we go. That looks really good. Okay, let's add some black. A little bit of black on here. This background goes pretty quickly. Now the black I didn't get carried away with. 
I just came in here and did uh, a little bit. I do want to see some of this black in the background, but I don't want it to get crazy. Very lightly, come to your piece very, very lightly with that palette knife. A little bit more black. more here especially over here now our B is going to come in here a lot of this is going to be covered up all right so when you got your background like you like it I think that looks pretty good um, I'm gonna look at it. I think I want a touch more blue in there just a little bit maybe over here taking what's left maybe a little bit more I feel like I need to have a little bit there we go a little bit bolder blue over there and just kind of even it out a little bit maybe put a little blue over this gray area okay that's looking good I'm liking that I'm gonna call I'm gonna call that done so we're done with our palette knife we don't need it anymore you can set that aside okay so our lines here, we want to uh, come in and um, draw them in very lightly with some paint, and then we're going to kind of shade on them. We have to get all of the background stuff done first. So I'm going to grab a number two round, I think. Uh, you can go to a much smaller round. And I just made a dark gray, so I'm just going to take some of that gray I mixed and see if there's enough black here to make a dark gray. Maybe a little bit more. Let's get some water on my palette. Okay. I want it to be a little bit inky consistency here. So now you can put your ruler up here and um, paint these in uh, with your ruler. With me, I just I just want to go along the line very loosely. Uh, you can use a much larger paintbrush than this, what I'm using here, um, because I don't I don't want my lines to be perfect. I do want them to be kind of straight on my original one. I couldn't see my line very well, so it didn't stay straight. My top couple lines were crooked, so we're just gonna roughly, very roughly draw in these lines. Now I'm up on the tip of this brush. I do have it thin to where it is a flowing consistency. I have to mix a little more here so that I don't have to give pressure to my brush. Um, that means I'm just using the paint off the tip so it may run out of, or not paint, the, uh, yes the paint. I thought I said ink. I want an inky consistency but um, Depending on how much water you're putting into it will depend on how the flow is off of your brush. So if you're not getting very far before you have to add more water or get more on your brush, just add a little bit more water into your brush. Mix it in with your paint. Get it to flow a little bit better. And do, do not stress out about these lines. Um, this is all background stuff. It all fades into the background. Um, see that? That line's very wonky wonky. It's fine with me. It's an old board. Come on. Let's have some character in there. I'm not sure that, that was straight, but we'll go with it. All right, I'm going to take this color here and add just a few little lines in here, you know, still giving it that wood grain look up on the very tip, just wherever. A few little lines, don't overdo it. This is just adding a little more character to your boards. Okay, 
Okay, we'll also do that with some white, I think. I'll get a little bit of white in my brush and a few, just a few lines of white. We're going to have to come in here and um, shade our lines and highlight a little bit and do the edges. So the background, I think, probably is going to take you the longest to do because it has the most steps. So any questions, let me know. Just a few little white highlights in here. I'm trying not to get too carried away and get too much. Okay, um, we're going to shade a little bit. Actually, I think I want to take my palette knife and add a little bit more white in here because I feel like I need some more white on my boards here. So just a small amount. So this is where when you're, when you're painting it, you can kind of look at it and think, hmm. That could use a little more white in there. Let's just add some. Okay, that looks a little bit better. It's not as much white as I put in my other one, but I think it looks good. Okay, we're gonna shade underneath our board lines here. We kinda need to give them a little bit of kind of depth, so that's what I did here. It's a very um, thin, uh, not washy layer. Um, but it is a thinner layer of paint, and I do want it to be a little bit more that that dark mix that we made. So this is very loose and choppy, and you know it's not a traditional float like you would do in decorative painting. It's just kind of a choppy little. Put it underneath that line. Get get a little. Uh, shading in right now see already how different that looks so I'm just using that darker gray mix that that I made up to make the lines we'll be using this mix quite a bit so uh, throughout the design so just loosely put it in there we have to mix me up a little bit more because I've already used up pretty much the mix that I've got. Look at that. That's looking so good. So I have quite a bit of that light gray mixed up. I'm just going to add some black to it to get this darker darker gray here. Some water on my brush because I don't want this to be thick paint here. I want it to be a little bit that's pretty thick. I want it to be a little bit loose and choppy and I'm, I'm, I am using an angle brush. I did not list an angle brush on my list, but um, flat brush, I think, is what I used on my original one. Just underneath every one of these. It's giving it some dimension. It's looking good. Mix a little bit more black in with that lighter gray mix that I have there. Very choppy. It's not a smooth float by any means that we do in our traditional decorative painting kind of stuff. We've done every board. Now we have to do our edges. So I'm going to take that uh, gray mix where I add a little bit more black in there. It might be a touch too much. I want that dark gray. A little bit of water. And now we're just going to create some little lines on the edges. Okay. So I'm just going to be up on my 
the chisel edge of my brush and just kind of, kind of, I don't know, kind of scumble and scoot it along. Let me zoom in just a little bit. And just let the, because I've only got paint on the corner of this brush. Um, just do as little or as much as you want to of this. And they can be as short or as long as you want them to be. all the way down okay we're gonna do this side as short or as long as you want them to be that is the key here Got a little bit more black in my brush now paint there so those were really light a little too light okay so I just did both edges super fast now I want to go along the bottom and the top I'm going to use the corner of this brush move this over so you can see it and I'm just going to very loosely I'm gonna to have to get way more paint in my brush here uh, go to a flat brush if you want to. I'm just going to very messily go along the edge here. I've done this in the past mostly with a round brush, but this brush was in my hand and I can get the job done with it. So we're just kind of weathering up the edge. Okay, I'm still just using that dark gray mix. A little bit more, well, quite a bit more paint in my brush when I'm doing these edges. And I don't want it to be a solid line, so kind of break it up, make some come up, come up kind of high. Um, it's very loose and textury and messy, and um, it's what makes it incredibly fun is being able to just be loose. Okay, so just a rough, a rough looseness on there. On both ends okay we've got to do one more thing on our background here and that's take some white and add some highlights just loose little highlights we're gonna add a little bit of loose highlight where we put our dark color just I'm mostly going in the middle of the boards here doesn't have to be a solid line I'm really breaking it up and oh, okay Charlene well thanks for being here catch the replay that's great um, it'll be here forever <laughs> um, so it's just loose just light just Still just small amounts of paint, not a lot, just a little bit on those boards. And we're also going to put a little bit, not a lot, on our edges. Maybe just next to some of these lines. Not all of them, just, you know, here and there. Go to this side. Very loose and messy, so I don't I don't want you to try and be perfect about this. This is not one of those backgrounds that requires perfection. Um, and I did not go next to these areas that I created on the edge. Put it over here so you can see it. But you can come in here and just do a couple places, put a little highlight on there switch over to this side I'm 
Okay. So, mine goes this way because my highlight on, the, on my boards is up here. So this is the direction that mine is going to be going. Oh, I'd angle out just a little bit. I'd like for you to see the whole board. So we've got our background done. Isn't that just the coolest background? I love it. So easy, so quick. We do have to shade around the outer edges of it, but I'm gonna wait until we uh, do all of our shading around our, our lettering and stuff and do that then. Um, I don't wanna forget that. I hope I don't forget that. <laughs> I've been known to forget things. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my B, 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 B. Where's my B? Okay, I think I want my B to be somewhere in here. Um, There's my bee I used. I've been looking all over for this bee for days. <laughs> Stuck him in my packet. Okay. Um, as you know, I create all my own stencils on my website. So I just quickly went in and made me one that just had these two words on it. Uh, so I could use it today for you guys. But um, the regular stencil has all those other words on it. So I want the word B up here, kind of like I did my other one. I mean, I could put B here and then happy across the top. It doesn't matter, you know, it's, it's whatever you want to design it to be. So my word B is gonna be there. I'm gonna go ahead and put my words on. I wanna make sure you're getting it pretty straight. Okay, so, so with most stencils, like, um, this stencil if you've got any letters that are close to the one that you're stenciling you want to take some scotch tape and tape those off so you don't accidentally scoot your stencil brush up into those letters and and get it get something on there you don't want the same with this one um, because this one has the words fairly close to the B you'll probably want to put some tape there to stay out of those letters when you're you're doing the B okay so I'm gonna grab my stencil brush I just used black paint, nothing spectacular here, a dry stencil brush. I'm going to load it and then I'm going to tap off because I want my first layer to be pretty light and I'm just going to tap it in. I want to establish this stencil. Um, this was just a, a quick rough one for me to, to make so it, yeah, I left a bridge off. <laughs> when I made it so it's it's really loose right through there so I probably will tap um, all of the B each time because it's uh, not connected up there I left a bridge off those bridges are very very important when you're making stencils and uh, I made a new stencil the other day and it had a lot of stencil of bridges on it ridiculous how many I had to put on it. Okay, I'm holding that down with my finger because that's a wide area and I really want to get the paint in there. So I'm going to continue to hold it and finish this side of the B. Your stencil, if you buy the Let It Be stencil, is not like this, so you don't have to worry about holding the letter. Alright, I'm going to make sure it doesn't move. That is key not getting things the way you want so you can use a makeup sponge to do this you can hand draw your lettering on use any kind of words that you want paint right there okay I'm making sure I've got good coverage at least good enough let's take a peek that looks pretty good. Ooh, got that one really close to the top, but that looks good. Okay, so the word happy is going to go along this edge. And it should fit along here very nicely. Move my tape here. So 
So I'm just taping it down with scotch tape. I can see the edge of my um, surface there, so I can kind of tell if I'm getting it fairly straight. If you're not sure, put your ruler up here and draw a line. You can go back and erase the ruler after you've stenciled. So I think that will be a good place. I'm going to put it there and make it a good place. Okay, black paint. tap some of that off. I like to tap my first layer in. And see that one's not connected there and it should be. So for my own stencil I did not cut it very well. This was just a quickly made up stencil so I could have something easier to show you instead of pulling out that great big one. Um, and I do take my stencils and I cut them up. I mean, if I've got um, stencils that I want to use certain parts out of more frequently, I do cut my stencils up. I mean, it gives me more stencils and I just store them in a little container. So I'm good. Okay. Uh, I do want to fill in all of those gaps. Or what they technically are our bridges so whenever you see a stencil with an opening here those are called bridges and I've been designing stencils for many years it took me a long time to figure out how to put those bridges in correctly but I worked at it and now with programs it's much easier to do those bridges. Now your P's do not have to connect but I wanted my P's to connect so I'm just going to complete the circles there on my P's. And then this P, just black paint. My A had a bridge here. I just want to make sure my H is good there. Okay. So we'll come back and finish those words up later. So really my word B could have been down just maybe an eighth of an inch lower. All right. So I want to put my um, B on here like this. Now, uh, one tape I forgot to grab. So I'm going to grab it out of the cabinet behind me real quick is some double slip tape. Okay, so when I do my B like this, where I'm going to make a shadow around it and use the negative part, I put a little piece of double stick tape on there. You don't even need a piece that big. <laughs> um, it comes right off later, so uh, place your B where you want it to be. <laughs> And stick it down. Let me get some fresh black paint out. I want to create the shadow around my bee. So uh, that's one reason why I provided the negative uh, part of the um, stencil when I cut it. Because I thought, well, if somebody ever wants to do the shadow on theirs, um, then they can do it much easier. So I'm going to load up my stencil brush again with some black paint and offload it quite a bit. I don't want a ton of paint to come off of my brush. I want this to be very light and soft and I'm going to start on the B and then very gently come out around my B. I'm, I'm giving very very minimal pressure here. So we're creating a shadow around our B and that could be just maybe just a touch too much black on there. So I want to go around every part of this B and create a shadow around it. And that probably got a little dark right there. I'm going to go with it. Don't ever think it's a mistake. Just go with it. You know, they're happy accidents. 
All right, let me lift it up and make sure I can see all of my lines. When we get done painting this bee, it's going to have a wonderful, wonderful shadow around it. Okay, then just take it off and take your double stick tape off and toss it. You're done with that. We're done with the stencil. We can now rinse the stencil brush out. You like the letters connected, Debbie? I do too. Um, the bridges are required for, I mean, you can't make a stencil without the bridges. I mean, it's just impossible. Um, so yeah, I, I prefer to have them connected too. I feel like it looks more like hand lettering. So I always, always connect my bridges. Um, Kathy says, I have to hold part of my stencil down. Needless to say, fingers covered in paint. Yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, I know that that look very well. I have done it many, many times. And uh, yes. <laughs> Okay, so painting in the bee, there's a couple of ways that you can do it. You can take this stencil and lay it on here where you've got your shadowed at. Line everything up. <laughs> Might be a bit tricky, but it can be done. It's okay if you get into the shadow a little bit, but um, just try to line it up best you can. Then you'll want to tape it down. Now, what I would do, I'm, I'm not going to use the stencil to paint mine in. I'm going to paint it without the stencil. I'm going to show you how to paint it without the stencil. Because if you're doing the line drawing on the other one, you would want, uh, you, you'll be doing it the way that I'm doing it. So you're going to want to draw your line that is going to form the shape of the body. I'm probably going to make mine a little bit fatter. And then you're going to want to tape along that line. I highly recommend using some artist tape that you can curve very easily along that line. And then you can paint the entire body in all the colors that we have to do. Remove that tape. Okay? Tape off. Well, you don't need to tape off for your wings. You'd only need it for the body. The wings are going to have washes of color in it, so you don't necessarily need it for the wings. Um, but that's how you'll want to use the stencil. Just tape, draw your lines for your body, and then paint the body all completely in. Um, the wings can be let, I mean it can be left on, and you could tape the body off and paint the wings in with your wash. But I like to go and make sure that my wash goes exactly where I want it to go. And I am going to make the body a little bit fatter out here. Give it a plump little body. Erase these lines. I need to redraw this one. So nice plump little little bee. Because base coating in the bee is super easy. It's all just black paint. Uh, we're not using any any other color in there. Might get a little bit bigger brush because this is a bigger body. We're going to be painting in with some black paint. Uh, you'll you'll need a, a round brush to do the legs and stuff, but the body, we're just going to paint in with black. That's why I don't want you to get too stressed out about the background. See that big area where I put that gray? Look, it's covered up with the bee. <laughs> we're not even going to see that. So just paint it in with some black paint. And now my stencil does not have this little um, stinger thing on the bottom. I just added that when I was painting the legs in. I just went ahead and added a little stinger on the bottom. You do not have to do that. I have to move my black paint away from my white paint. I just want to make sure where I put my shadow there is no line separating those areas. So I want to make sure I bring my black paint up and maybe slightly over that line that we created when we did the shadow. I love doing my shadows that way. I mean, you can float around them as well, and we are going to be floating our shadow around our letters, but what a great way to do a quick shadow 
with that negative part of the stencil. Keep picking up white. I don't want white. Now I'll probably take two coats to fill this in. Um, the second coat, just a little wash of black. Nothing, nothing big there. Okay, so I'm going to grab my round brush and do my legs and my antenna. And I didn't, um, didn't worry too much about getting this exact as the, I don't stress out about those little details, so. Now my B on my bill, my pillow cover that I also reduced and did on that other canvas, um, I did make it um, more detailed. This one is not a, an, a detailed B. This is just a fun, cute little B. Um, the one that I did on the pillow cover and I reduced that same pattern and put it on that canvas has lots of little fine hairs that come off of the bee. Um, it's more realistic. It's still not a realistic bee, but it's got a little more realism uh, on it because it's got finer details. We're not going to get that detailed with this one. Um, if you want to, you certainly can go watch that video. For that B, and uh, I, I show you exactly how to do all that. This is just another fun way to get a quick little B, and you can stencil all this in. You do not have to paint it in by hand. All this can be stenciled in. Just tape off your wing part and stencil it right in. Some people don't like to do the more finer details of painting, but I happen to enjoy it. It's basic color book painting because you're kind of outlining. <laughs> and then you're just filling in all the different areas that need to be that particular color. I think I'm going to bring this body out a little bit farther right there. little antenna here. Or a little fat antenna, because they are kind of fat. I'm trying to make sure I cover up that white from where our shadow thing is. I can always come back and float around that if I didn't get it covered up good. So that's just one layer. So can you see how we can still see irregular values in there, I guess, because um, it's not solid coverage. Even though we're painting it with black, pretty much any color you paint with, you just can't get that great coverage with one coat. So I'm going to thin my black with some water and just get a wash, um, a pretty pigmented wash, and just put a wash of color on my B, and that takes care of smoothing out all those details. So i got to put my stinger on too. So that takes care of smoothing all those little details out the, the, where the paint didn't quite cover good. Uh, this is how I paint all the time when I'm painting my decorative style of painting. And I put my first layer on, and my second layer is generally always uh, a very pigmented wash of color. Okay, and I can take a little bit of that. 
that. And if I need to go over my legs and make sure they've got some good coverage, I can do that. Super fast. Because you've already got the main coat on there, you're just kind of going through the center, basically, and making sure that the black is black. Okay. Super, super easy. Um, while I have my body drying, first I want to put my little stinger on. I have to put more black out because we're going to need more black. I'm going to put my little stinger thing on. This part is optional because the um, the stencil doesn't have the stinger on it. It's just a fun, playful little bee. So we're just creating a little um, triangle, a pyramid shape here, connecting the body. Just make that little point on the stinger. I'm sure it's not centered on the body, but <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. Okay, so I wanted to quickly um, put a line separating the two wings. Um, I'm going to do that with some pink so that maybe you can see it a little bit better. I don't know if that's even going to show up for you, but I'm just going from this point here rounding it to the body okay. just to separate the wings okay you can you can have it come down more which I think I want that one to come down a little bit more that one was a little too straight I think I was following that line that I painted there but we're just doing a curving line okay that'll be important later I mean when I put my wash on there I'll probably completely obliterate that, but I wanted to give you kind of the idea of where I would be going. Okay, let's put our yellows out. So we got our primary yellow and our um, deep ochre. Uh, if you do not have deep ochre, you can use antique gold would be a good option, which I think may be the color I used on my other canvas. The uh, one on the pillow cover was painted with fabric paint, so it's a little bit different. Okay, so with the B, you can determine how big of an area that you want your yellow to be in. So just take your pencil and draw some lines on here. We're going to have, this really doesn't matter, <laughs> to be honest with you, because we're, we're going to be creating this kind of as we go but you've got you're gonna have three sections of yellow and um, then we're gonna have our one one two wait a minute oh, that's not right that's one section that's one section that's one section one two and then this is black so three black three gold color um, I'm gonna start out by using just a flat brush to do this because we're just going to be blocking in color uh, to begin with. We're not going to be um, adding details yet. We just want to get some color in. And primary yellow, um, even though it's a nice color, it's not incredibly opaque. So we're just going to paint this in very loosely, kind of just messily. Don't don't be perfect about this because we got layers to put on here and you know lots to do on our B. So we've got one there. I'm going to bring this one up just a little bit higher than what I drew it. Doesn't matter. Those lines will disappear. They disappear with paint or water with the pencil that I used. And then I've got a little bit down here. Let's put some of that in. Just messy and loose today okay I'll teach you how to be a loose woman a loose painter I do want to make sure I get up to my my black although we've got you know 
a bit to do here so we don't have to, you know, be overly concerned about it being up to the black right yet. Okay, so there is just blocking in our first layer. I do have to get that dry, so I think while it's drying, we can always move on to another area. I'm going to take my blue and make a wash. Let me find some place where you can see it. I really want this a very sheer color. It's mostly water, not a lot of paint. I'd rather you go light and then add another layer. So this layer is pretty light. I'm painting in my wings. It's very, very light. I'll do this at least one more time. Depending on how light yours is will depend, determine on how much of this you put in here. So we'll get this in. We get our first little layer wash on our wings. All right, back to our body. It should be dry now. I'm going to go in with another layer of yellow. Very messy through here. And then when this one is dry, we will start adding more. This won't take long to dry. I'm not, I don't have a ton of paint in my brush. And don't worry about how big they are if yours got really big. We're going to take care of that. Painting a bee in is so easy. At least this way, it's so easy. Okay, I'm going to take my yellow and my round brush, and I'm going to start pulling some strokes out of this body. Ooh, okay, that's a lot of paint. Into our black area. start creating some layers of stuff in our B. This again is still very messy, very choppy, very where is she going with that kind of look. Don't worry, we're going to take care of it all. I don't want you to try and make a line, but if you do, I'll show you how to I'll show you how to take care of that. I kind of made a line there, but I will definitely show you how to take care of that. I'm just using straight paint here. If my paint is thin enough, I can get some good flow, but let's see I need to add a little bit of water cuz I don't want these to be super fat. I do want them to be dark enough. do the same on this side. Make sure your wing is dry if you're going to lay your hand through it. Hi Karen. Hi Gloria. Great that you guys are here. Okay. Choppy, choppy, choppy. Choppy, choppy, chop. Ooh, a lot of paint. And don't worry if you get too much. We got to put some black back in here. We will take care of it. We will get to where we are going. There is no worries. I want a little bit more yellow in here. And down to here. I want my yellow to be a little more opaque through here. Through this fat middle section here. Our little strokes that we just pulled out, we'll be doing those again, so we don't have to worry about those. Okay, just want that to be a little bit more opaque in there. Okay, any questions? I'm going to go with my black now, and I do want to get a little bit thinner. 
Okay, so we're going to start with our black. We're going to start pulling it into our yellow. We don't want to cover up all of our yellow. We can come back and add some of that back in, but we've got to start breaking it up, creating some different layers, different... So everything's not all lined up like little soldiers here. That's why I didn't want you to worry about the white line because we're going to take care of that. Okay, see how we're starting to build some layers here and I'm still kind of all lined up here. So I'm going to shorten some of those by adding some more black in there. Just going over some of the yellow ones. So I'm not having a, a line of yellow. We'll come back and do the yellow again just to make sure we clean up everything. You can do the black and the yellow as many times as you want to do it. So I'm going into the black and pulling into the yellow. Tip of the brush that's more moisture to my paint. I want it to be a nice flow, but I don't want to have my paint thin down um, to where I, you know, it fades away. So, um, just start creating those different areas in there. Start in the black area and pull into the yellow break up any areas that you don't like the way that they look. And our next layer we're going to start curving a little bit. Do this one. I want this yellow to be quite that high up so we're going to start taking it down a little bit. A little bit of moisture. We also have to come from this side. Oh, it's starting to look like a bee now. Looking good. Looking cute. Okay, I want to go in with some more of my yellow. And this is where I really want to look and see if I need to um, add some more of these coming out. Um, I, I don't want them to be quite so straight. So when I come with my second bl black, I'm going to try and curve these a little bit. Okay, curve these shapes instead of keeping them so straight. So right now I'm just seeing if I want to add any more yellow coming out from any place, making sure that my visible in my black good. I will have to come back with my black. I want to make sure my yellow in the center is good and bright. Okay, I just needed to do a few there. So I'm going to come back in with my black real quick and this is where I want to take my yellow and I want to go into my yellow with my black going this way curving it around. So I'm going to start here and work my way up. See just by taking my black up a little bit higher here that gave that look of a little bit of a curve. I'm up on the tip of the brush here. I want to do the same thing up here by pulling down, coming down a little bit farther on that that edge out there and just giving that a little bit more shape 
Okay. Do the same thing here. If you want to come in and add more into your yellow, this is your opportunity to do that. not trying to cover up all of that yellow that's there. I'm just trying to bring some of the black up a little bit higher. Hope that's making sense. And then a little bit down here. Alright, give it a look and see. I want some of my black to come a little bit more into my yellow. I want it to be so solid, you know. I want to make sure some of that black comes into the yellow a little more. Okay, I've got my black a little bit too far over here, so I'm going to put a couple of quick strokes of yellow in here. We'll be shading on the edges, so. Okay, so that's the main yellow and black. I wanna now darken on the edges, and I'm gonna take that darker gold, which I'm using deep ochre. Um, antique gold is, an, is a good option for this, and this color is just gonna go out here on the sides. Start giving a little bit more form to our B. Just a little bit, don't, if you get too much, um, bring some of your primary yellow back in and kind of take it down. We're just doing the edges of our yellow sections. You don't need very much of this color at all. Okay. All right, we got a highlight on the body and the legs and everything. I'm going to put some fresh white out. Um, we're gonna do that with white. I think before I do that though, I'm gonna put another wash on my wings so they can be dry. So when we get to them, um, to do our detail work on our wings. I'm just gonna go ahead and fill it all in. My I've painted over my line, but I know where I'm going with my wings. So. If you don't, when you're done painting them in and they're completely dry, um, draw your line on there lightly with something. Um, we're going to be tracing and drawing details on these wings with one of our markers. So um, we just want to make sure they're dry before we get to that. Okay, so now we're going to highlight on the body and the legs. And I'll probably go on up since I'm highlighting and highlighting on highlight on this word as well. We've still got a shade around both of these letters and around the entire piece. But we're going to do all, all that at the same time. But we're going to work on this highlight here and the highlight on the words. So the highlight on the B is done just the same way as we just did all that yellow and black on there. Except we're going to stay mostly down the center. So... You, you can do this, I think I did it twice, but the second time I did not bring this highlight out very far. You know, far on the sides. Um, the first time I brought it kind of out a little bit, but not a lot. Um, I'm just going to go straight down the center, down to the little stinger thing. Up on the head, a little bit of moisture. Just gonna highlight the whole thing here. Dry brush on the antenna and the legs. Grab 
worked most of the moisture out of my brush, so I'm just dry brushing now. Okay, I'm going to dry brush on the letters as well. Not a lot of paint on my brush here, just enough to leave a little, little highlight. And on a canvas, this really does beautifully when you're dry brushing. It just leaves a textured high brush, high textured dry brush that looks so really good. Now you can do this um, dry brushing after you shade around your letters. In case you are worried about getting paint on your letters, I'm going to go back and do it a second time on my letters, mostly in the center of where I put that initial little dry brush. It's too hard to try and go from the end to the end, so I just put a little bit in the middle. Go back and do your legs if you feel like you need to, but I'm going to do on the B a second time because it's going to be really bright. Right down the center. Is that a black silver round? Yes, black silver number two. I think I used this one more than any, any other brush of the black silver line my go-to round brush. I like it because I can make it into a small flat and I can get up on the tip and get some nice little lines on here. So that's the highlight down the center of the bee. Anytime you get too much you just come back with one of the colors that's around it. Take some of that out like if you feel like you've got too much highlight on there. Come back in with some of your black in the black area or some of the yellow in the yellow area and it's easily fixable. I'm going to put a little bit more on here. On that little stinger thing. But I think the legs look okay for um, a highlight on them. Okay, we want to finish out the wings. And I'm going to use one of my pens. I'm going to show you first how these pens each write on their um, more narrow part. Okay, so the Delimate pen is a 0 0.55 and it's a nice one. I think this is what I used on my original one. Uh, the Micron pen is very, very thin and it will be excellent for these wings because it will make a nice thin line. And then the the Identa pen is just a little bit, well actually that one looks like it's the fast one. So I would go with one of these two, either the Identa pen or the Micron. I'm going to try the Micron today and see how it works. Um, we're going to outline the entire wing, both wings, and then put all these lines in it. Now the wings, how I do them, I make it look like stained glass where it's all different pieces going different directions. I don't try and come in and make a, a vein down the center and then put some off a vein. That's like a tree limb. We don't want to do that for bee wings. Um, we want them to be a little bit more um, characteristic. A lot more fun. So I'm going to make my little scoop line there. We want to outline the whole thing. I think outlining it, this might be where I use a little bit bigger pen so I can get a more solid line out here. And I might go ahead and use it through here because I really want those thin lines in the stained glass part. Okay, your paint really needs to be dry because if it's not you're going to clog up your pen and then it's not going to work for you. So if your paint's not dry, dry it or allow it to dry.
Okay. Hope you're on camera for that. Probably not. <laughs> so I did a quick outline there. So now I'm going to make all of my stained glass type stuff in here. So I just start out by making a not so straight line. And then I just start making little um, pieces and shapes off of that. Now you can do yours however you want them to be. It's, it's your bee. You know, I'm not going to tell you that you have to make it just like mine. But the more um, kind of character that you can give the wings, the more interesting they look. And don't make them all the same. Try not to make them all the same size. Just kind of have fun with it. Okay, so there's one wing. One wing down, three more to go. There's two wings, and these really are pretty thin lines here. I'm using this micron pen, so it's making um, a nice thin line on here. You want to make sure you're using something that is waterproof, because we are going to be applying some paint on top of this. So don't... to go here. Okay, I think that looks good enough. Both those wings look pretty good. All right, let's add some finishing details onto our our wings here. Um, on the bottom of these, I want to put a little bit on the bottom edges. I want to put a little bit of a darker blue on there. So I'm going to float a little bit of color, this blue, um, just on the bottoms. I'm still going to make it fairly sheer. It's just going to be darker than what we've already got on there, just to give the wings a little weight. Maybe just a tiny bit darker. I want to cover up our lines, so don't make it opaque. Oh, I don't think my pen was dry. Picked up some of the ink. I want to make sure your pen's dry. I'm not sure mine is dry, so I am picking up some of that ink on there, but that's okay. It's blending in with that blue, and it's giving a nice, nice shadow here. Okay, we want a tiny little bit of black in with that blue. And we're going to go a little bit more black. That's not enough. We want a light blue-gray color to shade here. Next to the body on both wings. I should have brought my heat tool over and made sure that ink was dry. Okay, we want to separate our wings. So actually I'm going to get a little bit more black in there. I'm still keeping this very light so I'm working it into my brush with a little bit of water. Just a little bit right here. we got to separate these wings. I'm kind of scrubbing it like I did along that that line in the wood. here. Okay. So we have, should have a little bit of shadow there. 
and then we'll highlight with some white and I put glamour dust on mine um, I'm just gonna make a little white highlight here And other than adding the glamour dust, that's all I did. I'm gonna dry this really well. Because I want to add that glamour dust on here. Give it that sparkle. Now, glamour dust, totally optional. Some people like it, some people don't. I happen to love it. Uh, it's probably my favorite product that DecoArt has. Um, so I'm going to bling up my wings and I generally put two coats on now I do want to tell you that you probably should varnish before you add the glamour dust the glamour dust has its own sealer in it so you don't have to come back and varnish on top of it but um, if you're gonna varnish with like a matte or an ultra matte it will take the bling down a little bit so um, See my blingy bling bling, and I, I did put it on my, I think I put it on my pillow cover too. I put it on this one. Obviously, I love the bling bling bling. Let's see, did I put it on my pillow cover? Yes, I did, Could because fabric paint now has glitter and metallic paints, and love me some bling bling bling. Love it. Uh, what size micron? Um, it's the one that I sell on my website. It's 005. So if you have that size in your stash of stuff. All right. Um, I did not do this today, but I do highly recommend that you can store your glamour dust upside down. Keeps the glitter down here. So when you get ready to use it, you give it a little shake, and most of the glitter is going to be stirred in. You don't have to try to get it from the bottom up to the top. <laughs> Not that a lot of it settles down into the bottom. Um, that's one great thing about this product is that it doesn't settle too much, but I like as much bling as possible, so I'm always trying to keep that glitter as close to the top as possible. So a couple of coats on the wings. Bling them up. This is optional. But do it after you varnish. I tend to varnish with a matte or ultra matte varnish or a flat varnish of some kind. Um, just so my painting stays looking like I just painted it. Okay. So that's just one coat on there. Of course, it's not dry. I'm going to let it dry a little bit while we shade around our lettering. Okay? So for our shading, we're going to make that um, little bit of that dark gray that we... Well, I did black around this one, but the dark gray that we did here for our lines and stuff. And we're going to shade on the right sides right sides right sides right sides right sides right 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 so it would be the rights and a little bit on the bottom so I'll show you how to do that uh, I'm just gonna make a wash of this gray color so let me spritz my palette because I've run out of moisture already I think I'm gonna clean some of this paint off of here so I don't pick it up on the edge of my brush and I'll spritz some new water it's just that kind of dark gray color that we used earlier it's just white and black mixed together okay I just laid my hand in my glamour dust I'm gonna go along this edge edge up here 
out here. Now, any of you that have uh, watched any of my videos or taken any of my classes that have painted shadows on lettering, when you're doing curved lettering, your lettering is going to stop at some point. So, like this one, I brought it down to here. So this one's on the opposite side of this one, so I bring it down to where those two, where that one left off. So they, they should kind of meet. Maybe overlap slightly, but they should kind of meet there. Hope that made sense. E, I'm going, normally I shadow on the left side, so the right side is a little bit different for me. I have to think about it for a second. <laughs> I'm so used to going to the left side of everything. Put a little bit down here, and then a little bit in here. Not too much, but a little bit. So you can come back and do that a second time if anything looks like it needs a little boost. just a slight little shadow okay so happy we're gonna do happy on the same side on the left sides and the bottoms okay a little bit more black in the mix here I'm going to turn it upside down so I can go right next to it and I need more more paint because it's not showing up on that background so a little bit more paint here left sides I'm going to do a little bit darker because I can't see it in the camera shot don't want it on the, coming past the top here Go along the bottom. Ooh, look how that makes that dimensional. So cool. Okay, so for the A, we're going to go, I have to have this upside down so that I can pull this brush towards me. We're going to go around. I might have to go to a smaller brush. I did bring a smaller angle. Let me grab it. I think I brought a smaller angle. Maybe not. I'll just use this flat brush. It's smaller. I just need something a little bit smaller right there. I've got a little bit more black in this mix so we can see it. bottom of the letters and inside here okay didn't really want to fill that up I'm gonna have to grab my smaller angle because that's not not cutting it for me I'm gonna grab my quarter inch Or right sides. <laughs> I have it upside down, so I'm on the left side and the bottom. I'll do the bottom here. And you can come back and repeat this a second time. I think I only did it once, but depends on how sheer you've made your paint. If it's um, pretty sheer, you may want to come back and do it a second time. We'll have to do it a little a second time on that A because it's not it's not standing out. And a little bit around this end here. Some in here. Okay, 
so your your letters should be looking like raised letters now just going back over any place oh I forgot to do this area here I feel needs a second little shadow just want to make sure they look like they're raised letters okay so now all we have to do is go around the outer edge and I'm just going to take a larger brush for that I do want to put a second coat on my wings, but I want to make sure they're good and dry. So I'm going to do that dark gray or just black. Um, I think I did the dark gray. So a little bit of white in there. And I'm going to white angle out so you can. I'm just going to very messily and loosely this around the edges make the edges look really weathered I've just got paint on one side of this brush one corner and it's uh, you know pretty watery I've got water in my brush and there's water over there on my palette in my paint so it's um, keeping it watery not over watery if, it, if it's got a lot of water it's going to fade away and you're going to have to do it another time um, so just a little bit of water a little bit more over here and there we go i think that will finish this project so let's bring in the original see how i did here see if we have any questions all right happy be happy <laughs> I'll get them lined up here in a minute wide angle all right, this wing, these wings are a little bit darker, and I think it's because I didn't get my, I didn't give my ink time enough to dry. Generally, I do my inking, and then I move on to do other things and make sure it's good and dry. So they're a little darker, um, but I still like them. Um, everything looks really good. Love the background, you guys. Love it. I hope you guys are going to try this background because it, it is incredibly fun. Just a lot of fun to uh, play around with, and and uh, make lots of fun. So see, I did my boards different over here. I still have a crooked board <laughs> right through there, but uh, that's good. It makes it look old and worn out and weathered and beat up. So that was my goal. That was my goal. I did a little bit more blue over here, it looks like. But overall, I love how this turned out. I think it is just a fun, fun project. Really fun. So. This is on a wood surface. This is on a canvas panel, so you can see the difference. Um, not tons of difference, but a little bit of difference there. All right. You guys all got your looks of this, because I'm going to show you what we're doing next week. Oh, can't wait. This packet is on my website, so go grab it and have fun. Please tag me when you paint this. Um, if you're leaving already, be sure and subscribe. Um, and please uh, like, comment, and share my videos. Um, I really appreciate it, and it all helps me here on YouTube. So, um, you know, subscribe while you're here. You're here already. Go ahead and subscribe. Okay, so that was done. Let's take a look at what we're doing. Ooh, I can't wait. Look at this guy. Isn't he so cute? The packet is on my website. It's on there today, and um, I'll show you my dirty stencil, but 
Um, I made a stencil for this, for the words. The words are in the packet. You know, if you don't mind doing hand lettering, that's great. <laughs> um, so I've got Happy St. Patrick's Day on here. And so we're just going to put it where we want it. This big one is the one that's in the middle here. And then these smaller ones you can use wherever, but I use one up here. That's a four leaf, that's a four leaf, and then two three leaf clovers. But he's called Lucky Four Leaf. So, you know, he's technically a gnome, but I thought, well, I'll make him cute enough to be a leprechaun. So um, he's going to be a lot of fun to paint. This is next Tuesday. Now, um, I'm going to have my surface prepped by having the background done and all of my base coats that I list in the packet. It tells you exactly where to stop if you're going to paint with me. Okay? Um, but at the beginning of next week, uh, the next live, I'm going to show you how I did the background. It's a modeled background. See that green back in there? Very subtle. I'm going to show you how I did that. This is a technique um, I used to do on a lot of my backgrounds, and I haven't done it too much in the last year and a half to two years because I felt like I was just doing it a lot. But I, I love how it gives a very soft model look to the background. Um, and I, it, it's just a fun, easy one. It's super easy, and you don't have to really <laughs> try and work paint uh, with a brush or whatever, however you, you normally do it. We're going to be doing it with a sponge, so um, it's going to be a lot of fun. But this guy, he's on my website now, the full packet, and the stencil is on my website, and um, he is going to be so much fun. He will definitely take a little bit longer. The class today, uh, the live today was about an hour and 35 minutes. He's probably going to take a little bit longer than that because you know we're doing the full decorative painting stuff on this one so um, yeah he's, he's gonna be a lot of fun just tons and tons of fun so go grab that packet if you want to paint along he's gonna be fun I think he turned out adorably cute and I can't wait to paint him with you so this is next week you guys let me make myself bigger here and make sure we don't have any questions that I need to answer. Uh, what size panel? This is an 8x10. Now I've just painted it on wood here. Uh, you can certainly paint on canvas. Um, it's it's the back of this one. <laughs> this live that I did uh, several months ago. Last year sometime actually. Um, so I just painted him on the back of it. I like to use both sides of my wood surfaces. So uh, that's something that you should keep in mind if you have a wood surface. Use both sides. I'll get it right side up. So, uh, you know, if I want to set it out in an easel, maybe I feel like having a beach scene today. You know, or it's close to St. Patrick's Day and I want to set this cute guy out. So, you know, use both sides of your surfaces. The only time I don't use both sides is when I'm doing an ornament. Because the back of the ornament, I tend to paint or write a message on the back of those. Um, if, if I'm not, then I will paint something on the back of it. But uh, that's the only thing I don't usually paint on the back um, so yeah that's what we're doing next Tuesday I believe 1 p.m. it's already up on the YouTube as upcoming so yes um, thank you Cheryl thank you thank you Anne and everybody thank you so much for being here with me today I have thoroughly enjoyed painting with you as always I love it it's uh, my favorite thing to be able to sit down and paint with you guys um, I love designing but to be able to paint with you guys that kind of makes my day so um, I'm always happy to be here and paint with you so if there's no more questions for me You've already set your reminder. All right. Well, if you go to YouTube and click on the upcoming for this, you can click on the thing that says notify me and it will notify you um, to your phone, to your email. It will send you a notification, let you know I'm starting. 
So please hit that no notify me on YouTube so that you can. I, I've noticed on my phone that um, they changed the app on the phone so that when you go to people you've subscribed and you look to see if they've um, got a new video, there is the bell right there that you can click on the bell and that's to notify you. It'll notify you on your phone anytime that a new video comes up or a live video comes up. So, um, yeah, if you uh, have the app on your phone, then go on there and do that, and your phone will, will let you know that a live is starting. So, um, I like that change that they put on there. I just noticed it this morning. I'm not sure I was on my phone much yesterday, so I did notice it this morning and thought, wow, that's really cool. That's going to make it so much easier for the subscribers to click on that little bell. So, yes, be sure and do that. Okay, you guys, I, oh, thank you, Cheryl. I appreciate that. <laughs> appreciate that. So anybody, if you have any questions anytime, you know, leave them in the comments or leave them on Facebook on the, in the comments or message me on Facebook. Um, I'm always happy to help in any way that I can. And I will see you guys next week for this cute little gnome leprechaun, I guess, <laughs> is what he is. Uh, oh, Anne says it also sends a notice on the Apple Watch. Great. I like that. I don't have an Apple Watch. I've always wanted to get one, but um, that's good. It does that. I had no idea. Okay. Um, I'm going to see you guys next week, same day, same time, Tuesday, 1 p.m. Central. I'll see you.